Welcome to iMovie for iPad Part 3. I'm Ben Phillips from the School of Education at Union University. Our training objectives for this video series, or these four bullets, to edit raw video footage and add titles. That was in Part 1 of our video series. In our Part 2, we inserted still images and other graphics. And now in Part 3, we're going to go back to our same project and add music and narration. You're looking at a Keynote slide, so I'm going to exit out of Keynote, go back to my home screen, and launch the iMovie app. There's the movie theater marquee. I click my project, and then it opens up my screen. Again, with the three panels, the panel in the bottom being the timeline, and the upper right-hand corner is my preview window, and the upper left-hand corner where all of my raw footage is. As I slide through the project, what we did was we put a slide that was a JPEG from a PowerPoint that explains the discussion question these students are answering. Then I have these t still images that represent the beginning of each student's response. Uh, at the end, after all three students have responded to the discussion question, I have a single slide that just says a thank you to the students, and then there's my university's logo, and finally a black slide with the end. I'm ready to finish the project and really make it slick by adding some narration and a musical background. What we're going to do with the narration is, first of all, narrate this slide that represents the uh, slide that the students were looking at the night I presented this on PowerPoint. If you look at the black ribbon in the middle of the screen, you'll notice on the far right a couple of icons. One, one of them looks like a microphone, and that's going to be the button that you open up to begin recording your own narration. Now this is going to be recording the narration with the microphone that's in my iPad and it's waiting for me to tap the record button. So all it's doing now is uh, serving as a meter to make sure, I guess, uh, like a sound check. What I'm going to do is hit record and I'm going to record that slide and then we'll drop it into our project. There's a countdown. Last week we said that one attitude of scientists is that they cannot force their values upon their research. So, can a Christian be a true scientific researcher? Would placing personal values aside during the research process negate one's Christian faith? Or would injecting one's Christian faith into a study negate true research? Jot down your thoughts and be prepared to share in a few minutes. After I click the stop option, it's going to give me some uh, uh, the four options there to discard, retake, review, or accept. I'll accept the narration. And now the purple rectangular uh, object there at the very bottom of the timeline, that represents my narration. Notice also it has the waveform, uh, which is how I can visually tell and detect the audio that's there. You can move that around if you need to slide it one way or the other. One thing that I notice at the end is that my image actually extends longer than my narration, so I'm simply going to click my image there, take that yellow dot and pull that in, make that even with my purple narration so that those two will time out to end the same time. What I want to do next is provide a rationale for what's even going on here. Uh, this is a video project that has uh, the purpose of demonstrating a strategy that I'm using in class. Uh, again, this is a research design class with doctoral students. It's not that it's some earth-shattering teaching strategy. It's really just something I wanted to use for this particular iMovie project. But I'm going to drop in some video footage that was shot that night that uh, just is a bit of a background, I guess, where I'm going to then put some uh, narration on top of it. Let's see. I'm going to use this clip right here. What I want to do in this clip is provide the rationale for what the students are working on and why we're using this particular strategy. Uh, again, this is some video evidence to share with colleagues or other students. Uh, I'm demonstrating something that we're doing in class. As I put the narration on top of this, which I do the very same way with the microphone icon and then record it into my iPad, I do not want the sound from what's in the background when I recorded that raw footage to be a part of the project. So if I click the the uh, raw footage there, that clip, it puts the yellow rubber band. I'm going to double tap it. You'll notice there's the option with the audio speaker icon there to change the volume or to use that on off feature and totally turn that off. What's going to happen now is it's going to allow me to put the narration underneath that clip 
and it will not play any background sound that was recorded the night when we shot the raw footage. Let me show you how we're going to use that feature somewhere else too. In all three of my students' responses, the microphone really didn't pick up as clear or as loud as what I'd like for the audio to be in my project. So if I go back to that clip and double tap it, I can take that bar, that slider bar, and slide it over to the right, and that's going to amplify the sound for the students. You'll notice visually what happened in the waveform is those got uh, to be a lot taller there, those peaks, and so that's just simply showing me that that sound clip has been turned up. It's going to be much louder than what it was originally recorded. I'll eventually do that with all three students' responses to make that uh, be very clear when you hear the audio. Also, I'll go back and record the rationale and embed it underneath that particular uh, clip of raw footage later on. I do want to put a title slide in here to simply say that this is going to be the indication of where my uh, raw footage goes. Uh, I just pulled in raw footage, but I actually want a still image. So let me select that and delete that out of the project. I need to click the camera icon, and in my camera roll, uh, let's see, I'll use maybe this image here. In my other images from the previous clips, if you watch this, you will re may remember that I set that to be six seconds long by pulling that rubber band out. And then I'm going to double tap it, and on the title, I'm going to use this opening. And what I'm going to do again is record the rationale for that particular strategy. But that title right there will be the segment, or I guess the introduction, to what that's going to look like. It will then cross dissolve into the raw footage, and then that raw footage, which remember has been silenced, will have narration under it to explain what the students are doing. Finally, I want to uh, put some th music in the background, and this music in the background is going to uh, be some theme music preloaded onto the iMovie app. If I click the music note, you'll notice that their very first option is theme music, and you select that window there, and you have a few options, not very many, but they're all um, instrumentals which would fit for different kinds of project. I've selected the one that's titled Modern. Uh, we're going to use that one in just a minute to put as my theme music. Also, if you have music uploaded into your iTunes, you can certainly pull in your own songs that you have from your iTunes library. I do want one more slide at the very beginning. I want to have some type of uh, slide that represents uh, exactly what we're even doing here. And so let me put one more still image in. Again, I'm going to extend that out about six seconds and then put the title of what we're doing in this particular strategy. Uh, this particular strategy was using writing for class discussions. Okay, it's very helpful to have all the video footage laid down first before you start messing with the music because uh, it's hard to go the other way around. So I'm going to go back to my music. I'm going to select theme music. I'm going to choose the one that is modern. When I simply click it, you'll notice it drops the audio into the timeline and it surrounds all those clips, meaning it's playing in the background under all of this footage. What also happens by default is uh, oftentimes it will play that same song over and over and over. It's going to loop it. You can change that setting here in the upper right hand corner where you see the icon of the gear. And there's the option where it says loop background music. By default that will be turned on like that. So you simply slide that over to off. And uh, I don't want that same song to play over and over. Also, I don't want the song to play uh, during this part of my... Um, project where I am recording the narration for that particular slide. So I can move and edit the background music just like editing anything else. I'll select it. There's the yellow rubber band. I take that yellow dot and then I'm going to pull that in and it's going to go all the way back to the very beginning of that slide. I'm going to let it play just a couple of notes as it merges over. But now the music is going to disappear when, right when that narration comes in. Uh, let's let's uh, take a listen. Last week we said that one attitude of scientists is that they cannot force their values upon their It sounds to me like the music is a little bit loud, so I can simply double click that, pull the volume back a little bit, and change the volume on my theme music. 
Now, here's a very strange thing that I've had to develop a workaround to get this exactly like I want it. Because what I want to happen is, when this title comes back up, this still image that says Student 1, again, remember, that's a visual marker for the next segment. I want there to be an audio clip, the same music, that is a, a signal there as well. What iMovie does not allow you to do is to take background music and position it where you want it into the project. Now I can move the narration around and if I choose a sound effect I have control over that but I don't have control over theme music. What happens is if I drop this, this song in again, Modern, and it puts it right behind the ending of the first one, I cannot take that with my fingertip and then position it or move it in any particular way. It is, uh, I guess you would stay in a way stuck right there as it is uh, positioned in by iMovie by default. What I can do though is I can take it and shrink it. I'm going to reduce it uh, all the way from the back end and we're going to go all the way to where that narration is over. Now what happens if I drop in modern again, that song, is it's going to put another one right behind that first one. And so it's going to keep building the song over and over. Remember though, I do not want the music to play under my narration. So I'm going to select that clip, double click it, and I'm going to turn the music off. What just happened is that green bar there that represents the song, which is being silenced, but it's holding out the time in my timeline so that the music will start back when this clip comes up that is my marker representing where it says student one and it's the beginning of that. I'm going to have to do that over and over and over, building in a silent piece of music for my background music with the piece of music turned on until I eventually get the music like I want it. In other words, I will have to take this music and take this and edit it by uh, using that yellow dot. I'm going to have to shrink it all the way down. Let's see here to the end of that little graphic. I'm going to let it play for just a few seconds as it bridges over into him talking. But then now, in order to get that repeated, I have to drop Modern in one more time. I don't want it to be under his audio because his audio is all I want students to focus on when they watch this clip. I'm going to turn it off. And so then that will get me as my advance down my timeline all the way to, let me position it where the end of his is. Now there's that still image that represents, remember as a placeholder that says student two, I'll drop modern in again, turn it on. As she starts talking, I'll turn it off, on, off, and alternate that back and forth. I know that seems like a laborious way to do that, but uh, that's the workaround that I've discovered that allows you to position the background music where you want it because iMovie does not let you naturally move it to certain spots within the project. So I'm going to finish out my narration for the rationale. I'm also going to finish out the background music, fix a couple of final things here uh, that I've mentioned in earlier videos, and then I'll upload the final project as it is the completely finished one uh, as a separate video so you can watch that. This was a, ended up being a series of four videos. The first three are training videos, walking you through the three uh, stages of the process. The fourth one will be the final product, and I hope you enjoy. You enjoy. You enjoy.